Hey, hell, welcome. I'm Lukas Wolkotte from What's Metal. Uh, we are here at the Kultefest in Münster. What is your first impression of this festival? What do you think about the venue? It's really nice. Uh, we played here a couple times before, um, and it's it's yeah, it's been fun always. Uh, so it's good to it's good to be here and play alongside uh, other cool bands. It's an Kulte Fest. Uh, you have a lot of different kind of of artists and uh, a lot of different kind of music. Um, so I think that uh, it's a great com combination mm -hmm. of this kind of style of this dark artist. Mm -hmm. You played a lot of concerts in the last two years and actually you are since last weekend on tour too. Um, what are your impressions so far and what do, do you hope for the next performances this year? Uh, well, I wouldn't call it a tour what we're doing right now, okay. uh, but we, we are playing uh, some shows. Yeah, we did uh, four shows last week and uh, This weekend we also did a show yesterday in uh, the Netherlands and today we're here, so we played some cool festivals, uh, it was an on fire yesterday which was really cool. Um, and other than that we have, yeah, we have some pretty cool stuff coming up. Uh, this summer we're playing Hellfest uh, as well. And we're also, like a couple of uh, months ago, for the Film Festival of Ghent, we made a soundtrack for a movie. Mm -hmm. uh, Page of Madness is the, the name of the movie. And we're going to uh, like play the soundtrack at the uh, Roadburn Festival as well in about two weeks, I think. So that's yeah, that's something else than a regular Weedle set, but it's just a very interesting, fun thing to do for us. And especially in a place like Roadburn, it's... Uh, mm -hmm very much looking forward to it yeah um, I'm looking forward to see you live on stage it's my first uh, Viga Dot um, concert by the way uh, okay. how would you describe a concert by your band what can someone who doesn't know you possibly expect cool. it's hard to say I'm sometimes I'm surprised that people get through a whole show of us playing <laughs> because it's, it's <laughs> very it's very Intense music, I guess. It's, of course, uh, there's it is. not a lot of <laughs> breathing room, uh, specifically. Uh, yeah, there's just we, we mostly play um, songs from our latest album. Uh, the last couple of uh, since the album came out, basically, because um, it's kind of it. We took kind of a different path with that record. It's a bit more uncomfortable and a bit more dissonant and stuff and it's hard to kind yes. of mix those new songs with the more atmospheric and mm. nicer sounding old songs uh, so yeah it's I it, I think if I would go and see a band and that sounded like us I would be kind of uncomfortable probably <laughs> but that's, yeah, um, yeah, that's kind of kind of the idea I guess yeah For the type of music you are playing, are uh, you picky in deciding which festivals to play? And if yes, what are your criteria to select between gig offers? Money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Honest question. No, I'm just Answer. kidding. It's money. Uh, but um, there's, I don't know, just what, what really speaks to us is, is especially lately, is doing uh, like interesting out-of-the-box stuff like the, the the movie soundtrack for example mm -hmm. that I, I mentioned earlier if that offer came in to do that that was something we all got very excited about um, because it's something different it's something kind of stepping outside of the black metal genre yeah um, and playing yeah playing festivals with eclectic lineups is also something that we really enjoy so mm -hmm. I mean I enjoy a good metal festival as much as the next guy But it's also nice if you play alongside a wide range of mm -hmm. musical genres and bands, and that's that's stuff that's that kind of speaks to us. Stuff that goes outside of the black metal box as well. Okay. Let's talk about your last album. Uh, there's always blood at the end of the road. When I listened uh, first to the album, I thought it was it is very intense, experimental, <coughs> and very aggressive. I was overwhelmed and a little bit confused by very different and dissonant influences. After the third round, I get more and more into it. Mm. Do you think this album is like a cryptic puzzle or an enigma about human disgrace that's needed time? Uh, I think it's definitely the 
like the record which needs the most uh, replays to understand what is going on and and to to hear all the details that are on the record. Um, I think the the records before were a bit more straightforward and and easier to di digest. Um, I still think there's like a lot of to say uh, to say catchy stuff on the record, but it's just. Mm. It's, it's buried beneath a lot of weird dissonant stuff and uncomfortable samples and, and weird influences uh, that aren't so logical maybe for black metal. But yeah, like I said before as well, we like stepping outside of that box from time to time. And I think that's, that's what makes it interesting kind of, you know. Mm. <laughs> On the current album and importantly also in live situation, you make use of samples as well as sampled and altered sounds, even spoken words, um, that go into the songs and their uh, transition. How do you de develop um, this as a band? Are these aspects are added later on or does this also work in reverse, where such elements are the trigger for the songs to develop? I think it works kind of in both ways, like you, you say. It's, it's a kind of... <clears throat> an, an, uh, A constant ongoing process like we're we always keep our ears and eyes open for interesting weird sample material that that could work with us and sometimes it's like you said that you hear something that triggers you into creating a song specifically for that sometimes it works the opposite opposite way where you have a song and then you you we add a sample and it it we realize like oh yeah this is this give the, the this gives the song some kind of extra atmosphere or vibe mm -hmm. uh so yeah it works kind of in bo both direction and, and it's it's an yeah it's an everyday process we always mm -hmm. uh, look out for yeah samples um your first album trilogy um the doden haven't had uh, good yeah <laughs> <Pronunciation>. <laughs> first to uh, to three Uh, it's about the loss and death and is dedicated to a deceased friend of your band. Mm -hmm. uh, on your last um, album you changed the concept and your music is getting more brutal and experimental. Mm -hmm. Can you describe the new development of your music? What were your influences about the focus on the most disgusting parts of human nature and society? Um, I think the biggest influences are kind of the fact that we we started writing the record in uh, lockdown times when COVID was happening uh, and it was that on its own was a very weird situation where yeah like the whole world was kind of experiencing a collective trauma or something you know yeah of course <laughs> everything was different no nobody knew what was going on really uh, so we just started making a record just to yeah stay busy I guess and 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 in the hope that we would would ever be able to record it and release it and, and tour with it. Uh, but I think that just the the whole atmosphere of that period is kind of the fact the, the thing that influenced the most and, and, and had the, the, the biggest uh, like stamp on that record uh, and the way that it sounds uh, because it was so weird and it was so yeah You kind of isolate it, but you look at, you know, media of what's going on in the world. But is it true or is it not true? Mm. And you start, yeah, I started questioning my life a lot when because I was touring nonstop before COVID for for three years, and all of a sudden you have to like lock yourself in your house, yep. and all that is taken away from you. So like my yeah, my whole routine, my whole sense of being of living was kind of taken away and it's like yeah you have to ask the question if, if it's making you happy or if it's you know and it's like a lot yeah a lot of questions came up in that period and they all got kind of yeah crammed into the record and it's uh so i think the fact that it yeah we we, we made it in that period is is the reason why 
uh, we took a different turn. Uh, mm -hmm. We were going to finish the trilogy anyway. That was always a plan to have the three records. But up until Corona happened, we didn't really have such a clear view of what was going to come next. And yeah, when that happened, everything started to snowball a bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cosmic Cockroaches Die by the Dozens is the title line of FN Scar 16 and possibly the base of this apocalyptic, frantic and self-destructive music video about cockroaches flute the earth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the song about? Um, there is an allusion to the Terry Pratchett's Discworld fantasy novels. Mm -hmm. Can you describe this illusion? Why do you use it in the music video? Uh, the disc world, well, the song is about, uh, again, like linking back to Corona and like humanity being under attack by a disease and, and while at the same time it's like the earth that we populate is kind of under attack by us because we're kind of sc screwing over the planet. Um, You know, is, is humanity the, the, the bad guy and the mm -hmm. disease or are we being attacked by a disease? It's, uh, or is Mother Nature kind of attacking us back? And there's a, there's a lot of, you know, humor in those, in those novels as well and in, the, in that storyline. And there is in the song as well, like it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's, It's a serious topic, but it's also at the same time everything is just one big joke, and and it's you know it's yeah that's kind of the yeah the vibe. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a, a very funny fact. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. And um, my uh, teammate uh, Sven uh, wanted to know that, so mm -hmm. that's why I, I yeah, asked yeah, yeah. you right. uh, because he's a big fan of Terry Pratchett. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, he noticed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Immediately. So, uh, this is not the first guy who asks about it. Yeah, sure. uh, I think a so. Lot of, a lot of people noticed, yeah. Yeah, what are your plans in the future of Video Dot? Um, do you have new ideas for a new record? Do you continue the concept from the last album? Maybe there's always blood at the end of the par road part two, maybe? Yeah, I don't, I don't think we're gonna go with like the same title or anything. Uh, I think we're gonna move ahead in the direction that we took with the last record. Uh, we, we, I, otherwise, we would be kind of f feel like we're taking a step back. Uh, and up until now, like there's no, there's no actual m music for Rihidot that has been written yet. We still have to start that process. The truth is, up until like when we did the movie soundtrack, we, yeah. I didn't always have a clear view of what direction, or didn't have didn't have any real ideas of a new adult record or new songs or what what to do. Mm -hmm. really. um, which I did with all the previous records. Every time the Dolnara Toot One came out, I was already working on the second one because I thought we can do this better and we should do that and like ideas were flowing but not now but when we did the movie soundtrack like that has been like now I'm, I'm, I'm yeah I think we're ready to start working on a new mm -hmm. record because the, the movie soundtrack is very experimental um, ambient uh, loopers uh, there's there's uh, vibraphone in there there's yeah. a, lo a lot more experimentation going on it's not It's not a black metal soundtrack per se, mm -hmm. not at all really. Um, but the fact that we kind of started experimenting in that way, that yeah, gave us kind of a, an idea of like, oh, we can still take this a lot further than we did on the yeah. last record, even though that was already a big step. Uh, so yeah, there's, that's kind of where things are going to go, but it's going to take a while still before we have a, yeah. an actual record. Sounds very interesting, a big experience I think. Yeah, yeah. there's going to be a lot of experimenting, maybe yeah. move away even further from you know, the classical black metal blueprints and, yeah. and just yeah, see what we come up with and see what we feel yeah. comfortable with. Yeah. It sounds very interesting, um, really. Um, <coughs> Uh, you talk uh, about another side pro projects, mm -hmm. um, so your band comes from the Belgian artist collective Church of Ra. Um, can you describe how this collective was built and created? How do you inspire each other or collaborate? Yeah, I wouldn't. Um, 
but it was kind of uh, the Church of Rot um, collective idea, something that kind of sprung from from Amun Ra, mm -hmm. um, and it was a way, uh, I guess, to um, to show to involve people that weren't per se part of the band Amun Ra, but they had, yeah, they were surrounded by the by people like Stefan Tamerman, who, who's a photographer and and, uh, and a visual artist and everything and there's all these people that kind of you know uh, worked with Amun Ra and Amun Ra worked with them and and they have their own inputs in 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 uh, in the band but they you know so the Church of Rotting was kind of a, a name for that collective all those people who yeah. contributed and and who were in a way part of it but but not by being um, but personally, I don't, I don't really identify with it that m much myself. Mm. Like, um, it's great that people find like a con that people have a connection with it, mm. and they kind of find a, a home within it. And and um, yeah, there's I've I've always heard so many stories of when I played in Amenara back in the day of people telling these insane stories of of. Yeah, what a, a huge impact the band had 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 on their life emotionally and and psychologically and just getting them through heavy periods and stuff. So I think it's a very beautiful thing that that people, yeah, can can get something that valuable out of it yeah. and and feel at home in that that thing. But for me, I just yeah, I, I view myself as like a just a, a guy who plays music from the. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah yeah just well, okay just a guitarist that's <laughs> all yeah yeah uh the important question belgian beer or german beer your choice ha i haven't had a drink in two years so it's a hard <laughs> question uh but i have to say belgian beer like I, okay. I, I'm, i'm a belgian like when i i, I really liked orval when I still used to drink, yeah. that was my favorite beer, and <laughs> I, that that's still the only beer where I was like, ah, oh, that's 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 good. Like, yeah, there's nothing wrong with German beer, of course, but Belgium is kind of. I like both too. Uh, so yeah, exactly, <laughs> no yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but I guess yeah, Belgium is a uh, yeah. I'd, I'd have to yeah be patriotic here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, final question. Yes. Um, our show called What's Metal. So. Mm -hmm. What means metal for you? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, that's that's a really good question. Uh, I mean, I could, you know, just sum up the cliches of pounding drums and and heavy guitars and heavy basses and and it's it's it has just become such a wide range of subgenres uh, mm. that it's hard to define I think um, basically black metal if you go back long enough in time you you end up with the blues and 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 uh, yeah just the it's yeah it's like it's a form of protest like in every step of the way like blues was a a form of silent protest uh, against slavery and then it turned into rock and roll which was a protest and then metal was an even louder protest and everything is kind of uh, you know like a, um, a, a fuck you to society or, or you know and, and punk was and all the heavy music genres were kind of yeah and in many ways they still are uh so I think, yeah, just, I never, until I, 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 I started listening to hardcore and punk and that led me to listen to metal and other heavier genres. And to me, that was just, yeah, the first, I, I, I was always bullied as a kid in school and they all listened to techno and I never fit in because I didn't like that shit. And I was like, oh, and then, yeah, a friend took me to a hardcore show and it was like, coming home like all these you know almost misfit misfit yeah. kids who were yeah. just jumping on each other and screaming to a microphone and it was like oh damn, i can feel the same yeah yeah it's it's like a, if you don't fit in fit in anywhere else it's good to have 
heavy music as a place to call home and, and a place where you you know feel surrounded by people who also didn't find a home anywhere else yeah so, yeah I guess that's that's metal for me <laughs> <laughs> okay so thank you very much for your time no thank problem. you very much for the interview thank you for having um, me. yeah of course great. and um, I wish you a very great show thank tonight you, thank you. Um, feel free to own and and um, get a lot of experience here at Kultefest in Definitely. Münster Definitely. and uh, I'm looking forward for the show yes I'm really uh, looking forward so thank you very much